All right, moving on to the next video that I was interested to watch tonight. This is called 10 American Words That Completely Confuse Brits. I find language and the differences in language, or let's say idioms, that confuse other people that speak the same language, but because they're from a different region, you know, or part of the world, it has a totally different meaning or they just, it has no meaning at all to them. So I'm really curious to see what he's going to say here. Let's go ahead and just jump right into it. There are some American words that Brits just do not understand. It's like a different language. So today we're going to look at 10 of the most confusing American words. Okay. Let's see what are they? We're going to count down from 10 to number one, the most confusing word. So let's kick off with number 10. Number 10, realtor. Realtor. I, I don't even know if I'm saying that correctly. Guys, maybe you should correct you me in are the comments below. You are realtor. Realtor. Now, in British English, we would say estate agent. It's somebody that oh. sells houses. And so, if an, as an American, if I heard the word estate agent, I think you're talking about someone who is settling the estate of a person who has passed away. If you said real estate agent, I would get it completely. Okay, that's interesting. No, I get it. I get the connection because realtor works in real estate. Real estate is property in American English. So someone that's selling houses works in real estate. I get it. So realtor is the person and real estate is the industry. Yes. But I, or you could say a real I estate agent. I don't even know if I'm saying it correctly. So realtor you... in British English, estate agent. Okay. okay let's get on to number That's nine. Fascinating. Station wagon. I quite like the sound of this word. Yeah. Station wagon. It sounds exciting to me. Obviously it's to do with transport, but I... What is it with Brits and estate? The word estate. Why? See, now I don't understand... This is another one I don't understand. The previous one, estate agent, like I said, how I would interpret it as an American. A state car, to me, a state car would be a vehicle that belongs to an estate. A fancy, you know, like, let's think Downton Abbey. That's what that, like, I... See, now, we can flip this around. Ten British words that completely confuse Americans. <laughs> That's, these two are some, for sure, for me anyway. I have some crazy ideas about what a station wagon is. Then I googled it. I was a little bit disappointed. A station wagon in British English is an estate car, an estate. So it's a longer car, it's extended. The boot, Why is or it trunk called an in American estate? English, is extended to, so it has more space for bags and bikes and whatever you want to put in there. So station wagon in American English. That honestly makes estate car, zero sense English. to me. Number eight. Sneakers. Sneakers. Now, I'm a bit more comfortable with this word now. I've heard it many more times. Okay. But when I first heard it, I thought it was a chocolate bar. I was like, yeah, I <laughs> Snickers. Want sneakers. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Snickers. That delicious. It's not a chocolate bar. No. It's a pair of trainers. In we also often will use the term interchangeably with tennis shoes or athletic shoes. I have heard the word trainers before, but I honestly don't know if that's if I've heard that in maybe shows or movies from Europe or the UK, because I don't, I don't, I don't believe we, but we don't, we don't really use that term trainers, but I know what that means. Now, I, I do know that that doesn't confuse me. Okay. British English trainers. So in American English, sneakers, British English trainers so i wonder shoes. i wonder if the reason why those shoes are called sneakers is so that you can sneak up on people because the soles of the shoes are rubberized they're soft as opposed to hard heel um hard hard heeled whoop, whoop, hard soled shoes maybe i i honestly don't know I, i've never really looked into the meaning or like the history of that word Shoes that you might wear for running or to the gym, whatever it might be. Number seven, cilantro. Or in American English, cilantro. Cilantro. Yeah, that, that's my pronunciation. Apologies. So, cilantro in British English is coriander. coriander. Oh, okay. It's the herb that we use in cooking. Did so not know. Cilantro. 
I've heard the word coriander before. I did not know it meant cilantro. Interesting. I'm learning a lot today. British English, coriander. I still kind of get that one confused. I have to kind of think cilantro. Okay, all right, yeah, 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 I, okay. Yeah, it's coriander, I remember. Sticking with the food theme, number six, eggplant. Eggplant. Now, again, I've heard this one enough times now that I do finally understand that eggplant is aubergine in British English, but to begin with, I had no idea. Aubergine. And I was oh, a little bit disappointed because I love eggs and I thought maybe <laughs> there might be a plant that made eggs. <laughs> no. Not true. Anyway, eggplant in That's American funny. English. I, get, I guess I could see why that might be confusing to people who aren't from here. And I don't know why it, we call it eggplant. I, that's, I just know that's what we call it. I know what it is. I would not know what the heck that word is, aubergine or whatever. I would not know, but um, I can get the confusion. Totally can. <laughs> aubergine in British English. Aubergine. Number five. I, this is one I did not know until I was researching this video. I had no idea. Blinker. Blinker. Yeah. A blinker in British English is an indicator. So it's that flashing light that you have on your car. Right. I have heard it called indicator here before as well. We do mostly say blinkers or your signal, turn on your signal or something like that. So, okay. In both cases, I think each word uh, is a good description of what those are. The indicator lights. I have definitely heard that used. Indicators or indicator lights. And blinkers, because they do blink. Car, right side and left side, to show that you're going to either turn right or turn left. So in British English, we would say an indicator, because you are indicating where you want to go. You are showing where you want to go. Half the time, in people American don't use it. A blinker. So... Is it, I don't know, your right blinker and your left blinker? Uh, guys, tell me in the comments below. I, I don't know. Tell me how to use this word because I've never heard it before. So you do. You we we'll just say turn on, turn on your blinker or your signal or whatever. We don't necessarily, I mean, do we say like your right blinker? I don't really use it that way. Okay. Turn on your blinkers. Don't know. Anyway, in British English, indicator. All right, number four. And I have never shoots heard this and ladders. phrase before. Shoots and ladders. Yeah, shoots, because What's it's like a... shoots and ladders? Yeah, that shoots. game. You know, it's like a Again, slide. I had to Google this one. Okay, shoots and You know, and the shoots like a laundry shoot? A famous game that in British English we would say snakes and ladders. You know, it's that board game where you go up the ladders and then you go down the snakes. But in American English... You go up the ladders, but down the chutes. Right. I kind of get like it. A like a laundry chute? Yeah, a rubbish chute. Yeah, like a chute rubbish chute. You yeah, throw exactly. Rubbish down and it kind of goes down like a slide. the basement Ex or wherever the, yeah. the bin might be. So I guess I understand why it's a chute. That makes sense, kind of going down. I don't understand so, why you call it a snake. Who wants to go down a snake? A snake. <laughs> yes, I prefer it does. The snake. Anyway, okay. chutes and ladders in American English, snakes and ladders in British English. Okay. All right, number three. I didn't know this word until about... Awesome. A and month tap. ago. And even we use tap as well. Yeah. We do. We use them both interchange. I mean, we we will in my own speaking, I'll say the faucet, turn on the faucet. But people do use tap, and when we talk about water coming out of your tap, your tap water, I drink tap water because we have a well, that sort of thing. So I don't say I drink faucet water. I say I drink tap water. So but now I don't know how to spell it. I, I was like in Google, I was typing all the different variations I could. Finally, I found the correct spelling. The pronunciation, I, I'm not quite sure, but faucet. 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 Or not faucet. 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 faucet? <laughs> not that. Yeah. Turn yes, it is. Faucet. Yes, it is. Not that, I know. Faucet. Yes, okay. it is. So, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Turn off the faucet. <laughs> we don't say faucet. That sounds like a Brit. We don't say turn off the faucet, please. Faucet. Faucet. He was saying it right. He just wasn't sure because it sounded strange to his to his UK ears. 
force it, I'm gonna say force it, because that's how I say it, is a tap, a tap. So in British English we say tap, in American English they say faucet. <laughs> Sorry, force it. No, force it. I mean, Get it right. Totally different word. <laughs> never, I've never ever. That's so had interesting. To use that word. I've never seen it written. Wow. I've barely ever heard anyone say it. Do Americans say it? Yes. I don't know. You guys tell me. Yes. But yeah, I'm telling if you're you. Ever in America we do. And you want to use the tap? You can say, "Excuse me, where is the force it?" Force it. So number two, we're getting close. We're counting down to number sophomore, one. Sophomore. Yeah. Number two, sophomore. Yeah, sophomore. sophomore. I had no idea what this word meant until I heard it used about a basketball player. So sophomore, wow. I think this is fascinating. Is someone in their second year yes. of college or, or their high second school. year of high school. High school? Yes. I think. Yes. You got it right. Know. I'm gonna check this. Hang on, I'm gonna double check this. Yes. Okay, I was right. Oops. It is. So someone in their second year of college or high school. British English, we don't know. Oh, why is that? That. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Se you're in your second year. You say first year. Do so I'm saying my first year is my second you'd say, year? I'm in my second year or I'm yeah. a second year student, really. Yeah. But we don't really have a word for that. Uh, obviously, I have taught the word freshman before. Freshman is the first year of college or high school in America. In British English, it's a fresher. A fresher. So, first year of university, you are okay. a fresher. All right, that sounds like complete one? slang. Because this fresher. One is I'm crazy. a fresher. Number one, the most confusing American word, bangs. Oh. What? What are bangs? <laughs> what? What on earth <laughs> is are bangs? I had to find out. What I are had bangs? To research it. I had to Google it, and I found out what bangs are. Oh wow. In British English, we would say a fringe. Yeah. A fringe. I don't it's know why we call it bangs. I, down here like this. I I'm so do not know how you use it because in British English we would say uh, a fringe. So uh, she has a fringe. But that would sound weird to us. That would sound like because usually when we use the term fringe, which I get why they call it that, but but the fringe usually means like someone who is. Are you going to take them out? I'm not taking them out right now. I'm recording. So can you, can you... you get ready to take her? Yeah. Here. So, while I can understand why they're using that word for bangs, because it's like fringes the, you know, the face or whatever, but we don't use that word to describe bangs here. And when I hear of the word fringe, I think like uh, on the fringes of society, a fringe group or whatever, and fringe kind of has a bit of a negative connotation i think to a lot of americans uh not that it would have a negative connotation to use it in the way he's talking about but i'm just saying um that's definitely not something that we use to call that type of hairstyle so that's interesting that he chooses that as number one okay american english there's no ah there's no article so she has bangs so there's no yes. article but it has an s but it's not countable, it's uncountable. Oh, so confusing. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, I love your bangs means yeah. I love your fringe. Okay, all right. So if I went to the hairdresser, I would say in British English, can I get a fringe, please? A fringe. Can I get a fringe? Okay. But in American English, what would you say? Can I get bangs? Yeah. I guess, right? Yes, can you would I, say, I would like bangs. Can I have bangs? Yes. I don't know. Yes. So confused. I'm sorry. When I first heard that, I was like, that's crazy. <laughs> so to bang, sorry. like, to bang a drum, to, you know, you bang a drum. Oh, yes. A I, yeah. Or I heard a like I said, I have no idea why we call it bangs. That's so fascinating to me, these differences in language. It's just, I, I love it. I think it is super interesting. A bang is like a loud sound, but bangs, yes. it's a type of hairstyle. Whoa. I know. All right, so you can see. And can you imagine how difficult it is for a non-English speaker? You know, he, we speak the same language. And he has trouble understanding these idioms or expressions, just like we would have the same trouble with the expressions that they use. Can you imagine how, how much the head of a non-English speaker explodes when they encounter things like this? 
it's frustrating. There's a lot of stuff like that in every language, especially like in Spanish, you know, little expressions. It's like, what? You can't literally translate some of these things. Why these 10 words in British English, we just, we don't even use these words. So they're super confusing when we hear them. Once you learn them, then you're all right. So hopefully now you guys, if you're ever speaking to someone using American English or you're over in America, you will know what these 10 words mean. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Yes, I Remember did. To check that was me out great. On Facebook and Instagram, especially Instagram stories, where I put daily English content for you to learn English. Of course, I've got new videos every Tuesday and every Friday helping you take your English to the next level. That's interesting. I'm going to have to sub to this guy. Uh, I like this stuff. Fascinating, fascinating. I don't have a lot really to add beyond what I already mentioned, but honestly, I could make a video just like this and just reverse the words because what confuses him so much about the English words he's talking about would confuse Americans as well. So our top 10 list could look exactly like his, except just in reverse. Anyway, well, this was cool and I don't have anything else to add. So I'm going to draw this to a close. Later, guys. Mm -hmm.